Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I thank God for the great men and women in the house and also for the great man of the house, Pastor Isaac. Hallelujah. Amen. We give the Lord a praise. Next week he's going to get married. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I receive it. Amen. 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 We give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, O Lord, our God. For your house, O mighty God, your word declares. Hallelujah. Amen. For your word, O mighty God, honors you. And your word shall be called, your house shall be called a house of prayer. And every prayer that Father is deposited in this house will not, O mighty God, be in vain. But it is before you, O Lord, our God. The meditation of our hearts, O Lord, our God, and the heart of our prayers, Father, they are all before you. That, Father, every prayer of Lord, our God, you will answer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will answer Amen. to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We give you praise. We give you the honor. Let your word, Father, come with power Amen. and authority. Amen. The living word of God. Sharper than any two edges so the descent of our thoughts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have your seat. Thank you. And for the brief moments we have a conference as singles and married. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody is married from the womb. Everybody is born single. Yes. So singles, everybody has been single from creation. That's how God made it. Even twins, they have to come out single. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't come out both the same. They come out one after the other. So God has a plan for creating you and to make you just like him. Because God is God. Hallelujah. And he is one God. That is why he created everybody single. Hallelujah. Amen. To be like him. And we give him praise for this afternoon. This conference is going to be an eye opener to us so that we will know exactly what we live for and what we are about. Hallelujah. Amen. What does the Bible say about dating? What does it say about dating and courting? I believe that there, in the Bible there is no word dating. There's no word that is found courting. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no courtship in the Bible. But we are giving some principles as Christians, as children of God, during and before marriage. First of all, we must separate from the world. The world has got its own principles. And God has got his word, the precepts. And we must follow after the precepts of God. Line after line, word after word. And that is what equips us. And as we look into the book of Matthew, we choose somebody as somebody we must love and when we love somebody we must also know that the person love God above us and during that we'll be able to interweave to lay through and to prepare our lives to be knitted together Without wasting time, I would like you to turn to the book of Matthew. It's just a few scriptures. Then the time is also limited, but we'll take the scriptures. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and let's look at verse 31. To 
31 to 33. I hope everybody's there. Hallelujah. And he declares, if we look at 29, he declares, Yet I tell you that not seven, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, so do not worry what you will be eating and drinking, what you will wear, for the pagans run after all these things, and the heavenly father knows that what you need but seek ye first 33 seek ye first and his kingdom seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well hallelujah Amen. seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness talking about dating which is not found in the bible the first thing that we need as we begin to be adults as we know as god has made all things splendors and all things beautiful and all things that will engrave us to follow after the order and the precept of god to live and to be us married we have to have all these things in our mind there's nobody that will grow up will not look at the splendor of this world and will not be thinking about how to live and how to govern the house and how to project things families everybody will line it up so when we begin with this it is called the splendor of this world but God has a mind that he need every one of us to think about it by planning for tomorrow time to spend well not worrying about what to do what next what difficulties careful planning of things steps looking into things trusting in others putting trust in others contrasting things relationship and worrying about all these things but as we project first the kingdom of god and his righteousness then all these things that form a line will be added unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll go back to the book of the same Matthew 10. And from 32, it said, Whoever acknowledge men before me I will also acknowledge him before my father in heaven but whoever disown me before men I will disown him before my father in heaven do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on this earth but I did come to bring peace but the sword for i have come to turn men against their fathers daughters against their mothers a daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law a man a man's enemy will be his own members of his own household projecting this as a positive than the negative statement of the same truth clinging to the same and the fortlet of the best from Christ has also been explicit that in the love of God he is making it possible for us to be aware of Christ's total liberty and the experience of benefit of life that he has given unto us. He has given us the benefit of life. 
Life has its own meanings. Life has the things that God has purposed us to project positive side than the wrong side of it. As I first began, in God's word, there's nothing that is called dating. But he wants us first to look into things that will project us to the things that God loves. And the things that God loves is that he wants us to project and know that in his kingdom, he has got his precepts. He has set up things for us to look into it before we get into age of marrying. And all these things are just things for us. There's no one that will go into marriage that will not think about all these things. That is why he first wants us to focus in the kingdom. And as we begin to focus in the kingdom, his word, as we begin to re read from the Matthew chapter 10, is telling us the father or against the mother and the brother against the father and the mother against the daughter. That means there is life and its concept. But then for marriage to be established, we have all this thing in plan. It is something that it's always projected and established. There is a mother-in-law, there is a father-in-law, there is a brother, there is a sister, there is a mother, there is a father. And all these things are projects of God. And the principles of God that is stated. But before we project into marriage, as God has ordained from the book of Genesis, if we can look at the book of Genesis, Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 to 14. We can see that verse chapter 2 verse 18 to 14. We can, if we read through 18, it said the Lord said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a help a helper substitute for him now the lord god formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air he brought them to the man and he sees what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creature that was its name so the man gave names to all the, all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused man to fall into deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of man's rib and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. He had taken out the man's and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman for she was taken out of a man. Why all these creative things was being established? Until man was made and made woman out of him, the ground or the flesh of his bone, knowing and illustrating that marriage was called a union and a couple lived together in hearts. It is a mystery. There was no courtship. But God created man. And out of the man made a woman. I began to talk about the kingdom of God. Because all these were created. But God has in mind about the kingdom. And he created 
the kingdom and he created man. So that man will have the thoughts about where he must begin from. He must extract his life from not the worldly things that he sees, but from the kingdom of God. All the splendor that he sees, all the flower, the beautiful things that he must see in the Garden of Eden, will not be the attractiveness about the kingdom, but it must project to the creation and authority of the creator, the kingdom. So man will have to think about the kingdom and then will now begin to think about the natural and the spiritual aspect of knitting together to be able to live in the kingdom of God to take authority and then to begin to lace together and to begin to live together in love. I, begin, I believe I'm, I'm not too high. They will now begin to, get, to live together in marriage and not in courtship. God did not establish courtship, but he instituted the marriage. And that is why he began with Adam naming things and knowing the authority that he has in the kingdom and not in the flesh. So he now know that all the splendor, above all the splendor, there is a kingdom authority of which he has to name and know and to live in the kingdom to be able to lace and to love God beyond Eve. So when we have somebody in our life who will not think about the worldly things, but will think about how to love God more than the one we're going to need our life with. Beginning to know. And he said, this is a woman. So the two have commitment. The two have friendship. The two have the treatment of knowing the partnership and keeping it seriously. There is no time for God in courtship. Adam saw Eve and just as he saw Eve, knew exactly who she is. So we begin to know who we are in the Lord. And the same marriage also brings about commitment and essential successful marriage. And we can see that in the book of Genesis 24 verse 58 to 60. It brings about the commitment and essential successfulness in the marriage. As it is in the book of Genesis again, Genesis 29 and 10 and 11, it does not mean that it is not good to have romance, but it is also to know the person, to know how the heart of the man or the woman is, what the precepts of things are, the heart of the man, what is constitute of the things that he has and things that he will project into the future. But here we are in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7, it also tells us that marriage holds times of great joy. It holds a time of great joy. Not during the courtship. Because God is looking at two people getting to know themselves. And it did not take Adam any time to know who Eve is. But because we project ourselves into the kingdom of God, the Lord enlightened our eyes to be able to have the instinct. The Spirit of the Lord will have the instinct to know this is the right person. How do we do that? Because the Spirit of the Lord dwells in us. And He begin to open our, our spirits. And we begin to search the kingdom of God. And because we are in tune into the kingdom business of God, He lays us to be able to release that Spirit in us to be able to know exactly who we've met. Malachi also declared to us, marriage creates the best 
environment. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14. Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. He also declares that marriage creates the best environment of raising children. To bring up their children. As a Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 declares. You raise them up to the knowledge of God. And when they grow, they will not depart from the things that we've taught them. But look at what Matthew declares again. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 32. Unfaithfulness breaks the bond of trust. The foundation of all relationships. Unfaithfulness embrace the bound of trust and the foundation of all relationship. Adam and Eve did not live any separate life from the day Adam met Eve. The Bible declares unto us, they live together forever. And that is the plan of God. Marriage, again, in the book of Matthew 19, is permanent with God. And Romans chapter, Romans chapter 7, verse 2. It's an ideal until death. Without death, there's no dissolution in marriage. Then that is the plan and purpose of God. And God is not looking into anything than marriage. He never spoke about courtship. He never spoke about preparing and looking and desiring. But he said it is not good for a man to be alone. Therefore it is his plan that he will prepare Adam will prepare every man and will prepare every woman to a certain age and will begin to now project about the stage of living according to the plan and purpose of God. And not just into courtship because God never said it is not good for Adam to be courting. It is not good for Adam to be wanting. But he said it is not good for him even to live alone. Therefore, something has to happen. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Let's look at verse 19 to 33. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. Verse 19. says, Speak to one another with songs, hymns, spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the heart of the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father. In everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for God. Wives, submit to husbands as the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, and Christ is the head of the church. His body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to the husband in everything. To make her holy, cleansing her by washing her with the water through the word. And to present, hallelujah, Amen. I like that. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkles or any other blemish. But be holy and 
blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wives loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, hallelujah, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. This is profound mystery. But I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. Hallelujah. This is a very profound statement that Paul has to write to the people of Ephesus. Hallelujah. To be able to encourage them. Encourage them through their life. That in Ephesus we know about all these goddess and Dionysus and all that. But coming and knowing that there are some prostitution in the idolatry and all that is going on is bringing the attention of people to the book of Genesis kingdom and re revive ourselves to live according to the plan of God and the precept of God to be able to knit together and knowing that it is not about marriage is not ordinary but it is the plan of God it is spiritual in this aspect of the kingdom of God for God to be able to rule and to take control over it as the head of it and to be the creator of all it is very very important for us to know that there is not a word of God that brings about the courtship, but it's also telling us how his plans are so that we'll be able to know how to live and the marriage that we get in and lace ourselves with, it is all about the plan and the purpose of God. Before I close up, I would like to give these few Bible verses so that we'll be able to look into it because there is no extended time, but it is so important to keep that. First Corinthians chapter chapter first Corinthians chapter six verse fifteen verse fourteen to seventeen. And next one is first Peter chapter four verse five to eight. And first Corinthians again verse thirteen and four to seven. In Galatians chapter five verse twenty two to twenty four. And Philippians chapter two verse three to five. I crown it all and declare and decree in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. as a prophetic ministry Amen. and I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus there shall be no divorce in this house in Jesus Amen. mighty name Amen. but everyone has a plan and purpose of God is established Amen. and God brought Eve to Adam Amen. may the unction of heaven be open that before anyone gets married in the name of Jesus the Lord God Almighty will give the revelation that the heart of the man and the woman will be in the kingdom of God and that the marriage will be an everlasting marriage until so they do them part in the name of Jesus. Jesus. There shall be no divorce in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Because God declares that I hate divorce. And I decree in this house that the heavens be open. And as this word come before the Almighty God, Jesus. may His word be established before Him in this house. There shall be no divorce, but the glory of God shall fill every marriage, and there shall be joy and peace, tranquility, fruitfulness to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let us clap for her. Very powerful. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. 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 God bless you.